Chapter 10 Auto Select File Categories The data standard default configuration assumes that Vault professional users primarily create files of category engineering, while Vault Office users usually start new files assigned to the Office category. Most customers implement more than a single category for engineering or Office files, e.g., a differentiation for part, sheet metal part, assembly, drawings, and more. Usually, the assignment follows company-specific rules, and VDS is great in transforming these rules in automation. A user no longer needs to manually apply these standards. Data Standard uses PowerShell script language to implement rules. This tutorial cannot cover basics of the script language, and expects you to review PowerShell syntax tutorials alongside the exercises. However, we explain the workflow of dialog loading and rule execution in detail. And we focus in three exercises to achieve a common target in each VDS application, AutoCAD, Inventor, and Vault Explorer. Prerequisites. The workflow discussed in this chapter expects having multiple categories to differentiate engineering files. To quickly extend our training sample vault, the training files share an extended configuration for import. First, import the given configuration on ADMS. Apply the imported categories and assignment rules on all inventor templates. Repeat the assignment of imported categories also on all AutoCAD templates. Workflow Start programming VDS rules. This chapter's rules scripts change the default pre selection of category engineering to the individual categories, part, assembly, or respective drawing categories in all VDS applications AutoCAD, Inventor, and Vault. Exercise 1. Investigate the default script for CAD. Stay tuned for insights on data standard scripting and valuable skills to investigate details as well as debugging skills. Remember from previous chapters, the default PS1 for CAD applications makes initializations. Let's look at this file. We can see the multiple function calls and all of them are valid for all CAD applications. The initialized category is pre-selecting the engineering category. There is also another function involved in this, get categories. Opening any CAD sample, we can see the get categories function under the categories combo box. Technical workflow. How does the sequence of initialization, dialog loading, and code behind the dialog look like? Data standard initializes the window using the initialize window function of default PS1 script. The dialog itself uses control or style bindings to other function calls in the default PS1 script. Step 1. Activate a log window and trace the flow like this. These commands display the log, dsdiag.showlog and dsdiag.clear. Check for more information on Vault Help VDS debugging. Step 2. Add a breakpoint context info and breakpoint. In programming, breakpoints are useful to identify potential problems while debugging. Let's add a variable $stop to identify off the breakpoint position, if we use more than one. The script stops executing until the inspection window closed. Step 3. Add logging text. Logging text is a very helpful method to follow the script execution without stopping it. Step 4. Give it a try. In any CAD application, save a new file to see how the log window works. Step 5. Add more breakpoints and log entries. Repeat step 
2 and 3 for get categories or initialize category function. Step 6. Run step by step. As we are saving a file, we see the breakpoint text entries. This is the base to understand sequential customization entry points. Note that you should never forget to comment out breakpoints and trace call after finishing your debugging session. Breakpoints are visible and will remind you that they're working, but Trace information impacts the runtime of scripts if used extensively. Exercise 2. AutoCAD auto-select category. Our Vault VDS tutorial updated the category definitions by adding drawing AutoCAD. As a best practice, we should target the new category for pre-selection but also keeping the original rule activating the category engineering as a fallback strategy for vaults that do not have the specific category. Step 1. Initialize category individually for AutoCAD. As we are dividing our category initialization for different CAD applications, let's move the initialize category function to inventor window and AutoCAD window and rename the AutoCAD for now. Exercise 3 is for inventor. The other initialization functions should be moved after the category initialization. Step 2. Create a new rule for AutoCAD categories. Copy and paste the initialize category function and rename it. Now we edit the inner parts. Keep the first level condition to run the rule on new files only. The property underscore create mode reflects this context. Our focus here is to select the category on save, so we remove the save copy as condition. Add a new variable $mcat and fill it with the filtered list of available category objects. Add a new condition checking that mcat returned our category object drawing AutoCAD. So if it's available, we can set the category property to its name. And of course, we should keep the existing rule if drawing AutoCAD is not available. Exercise 3. Inventor auto-select from multiple categories. Our Vault VDS tutorial updated the category definitions by adding Inventor Part, Inventor Sheet Metal, Inventor Assembly, and Drawing Inventor. As a best practice, we should target the new category for pre-selection, but also keeping the original rule activating the category engineering as a fallback strategy for vaults that do not have the specific category. Step 1. Initialize category individually for inventor. Before anything else, we assume that you've completed the exercise too. If not, do that first. We start with renaming the existing initialize category function, adding inventor to the end. Step 2. Create a new rule for inventor categories. Under the API reference manual enums, document type enum shows the values of the file types. And under the sample programs parts sheet metal, 
we can find the sheet metal document subtype. We can also find these inside the software. We will exclude the save copy as from our function. To differentiate between file types, we need to know their identification. Inventor application and active document objects can be used in our function. We will add a switch for different types of file categories. The default switch is for any unhandled condition. Within each switch, the basic strategy repeats what we already applied for AutoCAD. Check that the target category exists. If found, activate it. If not, continue activating the default engineering category. Complete the switch for assembly and drawing by copying the inner condition and updating the category name. Let's look at the results. Saving a presentation file triggers the default condition. Exercise 4. Vault Reuse Template Category Other than in CAD, a new file in Vault doesn't know about the current file type during the runtime of the initialize window function. And the document type might change as we select another template during the runtime of the dialog. As one of many possible solutions, we read the individual category of the file template to reuse it for the new file. Before starting exercise 4, we assume that you have read and understood all previous exercises in this chapter. We will be using the default PS1 for Vault, so make sure that you have it on your vault.custom folder. Step 1. Subscribe to Event of Template Selection. Data standard can subscribe to any dialog event. The frequent ones are property changed and selection changed. The name of the template pull down list can be found in the dialog definition file XAML. Let's open the file XAML in your vault.custom configuration folder and search for grid row 2. The name of the combo box is template CV. Let's add a selection changed event. The function call on template changed will not work for now if we run the new stand file because we haven't written any function. Step 2. Create event handler on template changed. So our plan is to read the category of the selected template and switch the pull down list to this category name. Let's create our function. Each VDS datasheet or window has an internal property data context that allows access to VDS internal information. The selected template and its path in Vault are returned as text only. To read the category, we need to use a Vault API call to get the template's file object. VDS have access to Vault Server from its web services. 
We can use the object vault.document service to reach the information we need. Let's create two more lines in our script. And to be able to read the M files, type and inspect. The folder object returns a unique ID, so the files can be seen in the mFiles object. Remember we have 11 files in the templates folder, and if we check the first node, we can see the category name inventor part with the file name basering.ipt. We can use this information to further develop the script. These calls are all we need using the Vault API for now. We continue writing code filtering all file objects by the given name of the current context, baseRing.ipt. Having the object variable $mTemplate file, we can set the category of our new file. We reuse the template's category name to activate the category in the pull-down list of the dialog also. Finally, compare the completed function code. Restart the new stand file. Did you recognize what happened for a brief second? The dialog selected the category engineering and then switched to the templates category inventor part. The base ring.ipt is selected because it is the first template file of the list. As we change the template, the category automatically changes. Step 3. Disable default category assignment. We implemented a new rule applying for file windows, but the original preset category function is still active. Let's deal with that. Cut and paste the initialize category function under the switch folder window and custom object window. Chapter 10 summary. Honestly, starting to write data standard rules in PowerShell is a big jump if you've never used PowerShell scripting before. This tutorial cannot cover all the basics of the scripting language and expects that you review PowerShell syntax tutorials alongside the exercises. On the other hand, you should take away an impression how powerful the scripting behind the dialog can get. We changed the behavior and interacted with dialog controls like a user by selecting a category in the background. You can imagine the next step in another chapter. In chapter one, we implemented a simple rule. The name of the numbering scheme equals to the name of the category. We will need to extend it by activating an appropriate numbering scheme for a group of category names.